Hi, this video is going to be on uh, management of sodium apochloride accidents. So, just a few tips which uh, I would like to share which will help you or benefit if you have a patient walk in or if a patient is referred to you. Okay, so the main focus here will be signs and symptoms and uh, also the management tips. To begin with, what are the signs and symptoms if there is a hypochloride extrusion? One, the patient will have uh, an acute pain and uh, burning sensation. Um, there is swelling and also followed by redness of the area. If your patient complains of sudden pain or burning sensation, what you should do is terminate the procedure immediately or stop to stop working on this patient get the rubber dam off the patient and do a thorough visual examination. Reason I ask you to take this rubber dam off is because you have the clamp sometimes, you know, pushing the cheek, which may seem like there is no swelling, it's just a clamp. So it's always better you get everything off so you can have a thorough visual examination of this patient. Most important, if your patient is telling you there is a sudden sharp pain and a burning sensation, don't assume it as palpable pain or don't assume that's how root canals are and uh, don't try to tell your patient that hey this is how it is it's a normal feeling so don't worry about it don't do that because by doing that you're going to keep this patient longer and you're going to worsen the situation okay always try to understand that endodontics should be done painlessly okay and if this is going to happen then something wrong somewhere what you should not do very important first don't panic. You have to learn to stay calm. Okay, your patient is watching you. And second, very important, don't call your colleagues for help standing right next to your patient. Your patient will get anxious. They will get curious. They want to know what's going on. So the minute you call and you're, you're trying to ask for help, they know something has gone wrong. And when you ask for help before your patient, your patient loses confidence. He or she will lose confidence in you. So don't do that. Okay? These are the steps that you should take. I told you, stop the procedure, get the rubber dam off and all that. Okay, after that, what you should do? Immediately after exposure, aspirate sodium apochloride from the area of entry. Okay, you can use fine aspiration tips or whatever. Second, administer local anesthetic to assist in analgesia. Yes, I do understand you've already numbed this patient up, but the patient is having pain now, okay? So most of the time the patient has pain in other areas as well as sometimes even in those areas the burning sensation is felt, okay? Third, keep the sodium hypochloride away. Get your assistant to take it away. Now, irrigate the area with normal saline. It's really important. You tend to dilute you know this hypochloride okay but don't extrude too much huh? okay just a little bit and dry the canal as much as possible most of the times you can see this profuse bleeding let it bleed and all that and then dry the canals place your intracanal medicament i for me it is always calcium hydroxide okay with uh, yeah, an alkaline mixture of calcium hydroxide and after you do that i will usually seal the axis with gic now ask your patient to use cold pack for the first six hours for the first six hours it's cold pack okay also put this patient on uh, analgesics and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs very important the patient is going to have a lot of pain okay so this is going to come very soon <clears throat> you have to learn to follow up the patient after 20 within 24 hours even if you don't follow up your patient will call you because these patients have an increase in pain they have a progressive swelling facial edema they have numbness begin to feel numbness of the area and also they will have a weakening of the facial nerve that is for example a patient with uh, extrusion of hypo for the maxillary posterior is usually they complain of numbness in the lip so when they complain of numbness in the lip they also tell you that when they drink water there's water spilling you, you ask the patient to hold air in the mouth like this. They will find it very difficult because the motor function is lost in some situations. So it's, it's, it's good for you to understand that, hey, this has already got some, you know, some nerve damage over there. 
nothing to worry it will reverse in most cases okay let's see what next now get this patient in 24 hours later assess the situation look for any necrosis of tissue now this is very important because according to the damage I decide whether I want to put this patient on antibiotics because I don't want secondary infection I will prescribe chlorhexidine mouthwash in most situations if there is an ulcer I ask patients to take warm salt water gargle I ask them to do it about three four five times a day okay it has worked for me okay this is from my personal experience whatever I share here and also I tell this patient to apply hot pack remember first six hours is cold after that is hot pack seek evaluation by a maxillofacial consultant if the situation is worse or the condition of the patient is bad please get this patient to be you know you need to get this uh, patient to seek hospitalization next seven days post-op I will again call this patient in I will reassess the condition of this patient and I will look for any necrosis and uh, most of the time there will be a break in the tissue Okay, by this time there will be a break in the tissue there should be a, some reduction in the swelling but the numbness sometimes they say they feel better sometimes they say oh not much sometimes they say uh, it's getting worse and things like this you need to assess and you need to note down and tick down all these points and do an evaluation chlorhexidine mouthwash and also apply hot pack maybe the frequency is a little lesser but you need to do that next I will recall this patient 21 days review remember I don't continue the root canal even a patient is referred to me I will not proceed with the root canal why because my aim is to get the condition back to normal only after that I will go in and you know inject my anesthetic or go ahead with the root canal okay I will talk about it so reassess the current condition this is after 21 days continue with the uh, root canal treatment if the healing is satisfactory okay if it is not no choice you need to go ahead if there is infection no choice you have to wait for it to you know subside what what's very important is the the hypochlorite accident right now and when you start your root canal please put the hypochlorite away you can use EDTA you could probably use sodium I mean you could use a uh, chlorexidine don't go back to sodium hypochlorite I know sometimes you want to be extra careful it's okay just keep it away it's enough I think the patient has gone through a lot let me share uh, a few pictures of uh, a patient uh, I had to handle and uh, you just see you can follow all these points uh, I mentioned were also seen in this patient and that's how I normally manage okay you can see this is a clinical scenario day one post or post accident in three hours you can see the swelling is gone up you can see ecchymosis okay the patient has already started feeling numbness I call this patient I follow up I do whatever points I told you and then one week later post accident I can see that the swelling has gone down motor function is getting better but the numbness is still there a little bit better but it's still there if you look now the ulceration is coming you can see a large ulcer there is a lot of discharge patient is in a lot of pain antibiotics you need to take care of the wound and follow up again I told you 21 day follow up this is how the patient is in 21 days a lot better you can see the before and you can see the after there is a, a lot of improvement okay not all cases can happen like this sometimes you know the root apex could be out of the jawbone and uh, extrusion can cause the flow of sodium hypochlorite causing a lot of damage what's very important is prevention like we always say prevention is better than cure try as much as you can to prevent extrusion of hypochlorite because that is any day better than trying to heal or trying to help this patient but uh, we all know that accident is an unforeseen order and if it does happen then you know what to do thank you if you like my videos and if you want to hear more please subscribe